wanted to start today's video with this. Folks, you got to get prepping. I just replaced this washing machine. And I'm going to tell you what. This GE Profile 10-year limited warranty. Ultra fresh fence system to, to keep mildew out of there. All kinds of cycles. And I'm seeing my clothes a hell of a lot cleaner. And also that top loader I had was tearing up my clothes. I noticed a lot of my clothes have holes in it. And it's because of that agitator at the bottom. Whereas this thing, a front loader just spins around. But this is part of prepping. Replace your appliances now. Before it's too late. Watching the world burn. Watching the world burn. October 5th, 2024. Let's get into it. All right, we're going to hit the first part of this video because I want to help people most of all. And uh, right now, we got a hurricane tracking in on southern to central Florida. The majority of the tracks haven't come in right across central Florida, which would be my house. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm glad I got those, uh, those uh, hurricane windows on my house. I'll tell you that right now. But if anybody watches this video tomorrow, uh, if you live in, in Florida, hell, even in northern Florida, you never know, that thing might, might take a track up there. I don't, I don't think it's going to hit the panhandle, so you guys won't get hit again. But anyway, uh, start preparing now. I already gone. I, I, I was at the store today. I, I bought up anything that I might need. You know, make sure, uh, you know, that, that you're getting supplied. Now, I, on, on that vein, you know, I showed you at the beginning the washing machine. That's a long-term prep. But uh, short-term preps, let's look at those people in the mountains, okay? One of the things that you want access to, uh, if you did get trapped somehow, let's say it comes in and, and parks and dumps 44, <laughs> uh, 44 inches of water on, uh, on Florida. Now, I have a place in my community, and I think that even with that, of course, my house would be underwater, but I mean, but what are the, make, make a bug out bag right now. Now, what do you need? What are the people experiencing in Tennessee right now? Well, they can't get down off the mountain. All right, they can't get down off the mountain. So what you gotta have to do, and there's a lot of civilian helicopters around there. That's another part of the story we'll get into in a minute. Because I don't want the bitching part, I want the, the advice part here at the beginning of the video. But you gotta have a way to signal any sort of air support or even, you know, somebody coming in, in Florida, they can probably come in on a boat. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, uh, I don't know if you've seen other hurricanes, like in, you know, remember Katrina? Everybody was riding around in their, their kayaks and stuff. Uh, so, but you got to be able to signal. That means a mirror, right? You got a mirror, you can flash it during the day. Uh, somebody mentioned smoke signals. Well, smoke signals up in the mountains won't work during very well. Because they're, they're awful hard to see because of the tree cover. But it might help. You can buy a, a headlamp. Hopefully you got headlamps. All right. Now, or flashlights. And a lot of them have that flash mode. Flash, flash, flash. Now, during the day, that ain't going to work too good. But I guarantee you, if those helicopters are flying around at night, even through the tree canopy, you know, when hopefully you're going to get to an open spot. You know, if you can, I mean, I understand if you're crippled or you're, you're an old person and you're dependent on your oxygen or whatever, that's the, those are the people that are dying right now because we can't get them out. Uh, you know, I, I know I would probably die because I can't survive without my medical supplies for, for very long. I would have, well, at least I'd have a lot of problems. It'd probably take me a while to die, but right now they're in, they're in death territory. But anyway, so, so how are you going to signal somebody that you need help? Think about that. Could it be a headlamp at night? A mirror? Okay, now of course, you know, if the cell phone towers are working, <laughs> you can always make a 911, right? But that's not an option when you're trapped on a mountain and there's no cell phone service. In fact, if it hadn't been for Starlink and Elon Musk, there would be no communication going in and out of there at all, period, none. Now, what can you do to help? I wanted to talk about this for just a minute. Okay, one of the things, okay, so here's, here's one story. I know story after story after story, and I'm going to put these up. First story, uh, a fleet of trucks 
loaded with supplies, went to, uh, I want to say it was North Carolina, from Florida. Okay, we're doing all we can to help. Now, those, those trucks got there, and what did FEMA do? Told them to go the F back home. That's your bureaucracy for you. Or, a lot of people think, maybe it's the Democrats just trying to kill everybody. That, that's a possibility. <laughs> you know, you know. But anyway, so, but the flaw here was not with the bureaucrats or the fact that, you know, maybe FEMA's acting maliciously. It's the fact that they didn't have an alternate drop location. If you're going to drive from Florida to, let's say, North Carolina, okay, you're not going to go where the government is, or you, you go there first, of course, because, you know, hopefully, now, a lot of people are bitching at FEMA, and they absolutely should. They're totally incompetent, and, they're, and they think that they're coming in and running things. Now, in any disaster, I want you to remember back to Katrina. You remember that uh, general that came in there? Uh, I can't remember his name. If I can find it, I'll put it in the video. But anyway, he came in, and of course, Bush sent in the military right away. That was a good move by Bush. I, get, I don't like him. I never liked Bush. He was a warmonger. He got a million people killed. But one thing he did right was he put this general in charge. Now that general came in and he took charge of everything and he had uh, his all of his uh, the military and plus the words working with FEMA and they coordinated everything and that's what you got to have. You got to have a central command that coordinates everything. For example, okay, somebody wants to go in and help. Okay, but the road, there's still boulders tumbling down. Okay, uh, let's say one of their firemen, for example, got hurt trying to get down that road to help people. So they're saying, you know what, we don't want anybody going down that road until we can make sure it's safe. Because guess what, you go down that road if you're trying to help and you get injured, you've just created a problem for the people trying to help. Because now they got to help you. And they can't help the people that really need help. Do you see what I'm saying? So, but yeah, but there's no coordination right now because the, the Democrats are either incompetent or malicious. You make your own decision on that. So, uh, so there's really no central command that's taking place. So a lot of, and then of course they're trying to stymie people. Let's, let's just give you a couple of bureaucratic examples. They're saying they don't want civilian helicopters coming in because they're afraid they'll run into each other. Have you ever known a helicopter to run into another helicopter? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. You could just look out the windows. Hey, there's another helicopter. It's not like there's, you know, a thousand of them flying around. It's just going to be a few here and there. You know, I mean, that is, now if they're in the middle of a storm, which they shouldn't be flying in anyway, that, that might be a problem. That's the dumbest thing. So there's a bureaucracy or maliciousness. Make your own decision. Uh, next was a story out of South Carolina. People were lining up at a hardware store. And they were saying, well, we need to fill our propane tanks. And, uh, and so the owner of the hardware store, he was inspecting and some of them had an expired date. I don't know if you knew propane tanks have a date of expiration. And so the owner of the hardware store said, I can't. Now understand, these people got no electricity, uh, probably no water. You know, they're just trying to, my guess is, is they're running out of fuel. Okay, so here's what happens. Okay, if you got a diesel generator or a generator that cuts over, you know, eventually, it, you know, it, it'll last you three, four days, unless you got a big freaking, you know, five gallon can. Who has room for that, you know, an emergency supply of diesel? So eventually those generators run out of fuel. And, uh, and so that, about, to, about right now, it's been long enough, they're all running out of fuel. So that means those refrigerators, all that meat, everything in there is going to expire. So what they need that propane for is I'm sure they probably just want to cook everything. Because if they cook everything, not only can they feed the neighborhood, you know, because you, you know, even cooked, it's not going to last that long, but it's going to last a lot longer cooked than letting it rot in the freezer, right? So that's why they need the propane. But anyway, the story goes, he said, no, I can't fill them. He says, the state says if it's expired, uh, he says, I can't fill it. And if I do fill it and they find out, I'll lose my license for six months. And then I can't give anybody propane. You see how the bureaucracy? Right now, the South Carolina governor should be saying, okay, all, all, all regulations are suspended that don't make sense. Use your common sense and we'll sort this all out later. I don't know what the hell's wrong with South Carolina. You got Lindsey Graham 
freaking idiot. We're going to get into that in a minute. All right, let's get back to helping people in a, in a tough situation. So here's, here's an example. And this is the biggest regret of my lifetime. And I've told this story in other videos way back when. I, when Katrina happened, I was in the prime of my life. I was in great freaking shape. I was backpacking all around Michigan. I had all the supplies I needed. And uh, right after Katrina, I was upset. I called up the Red Cross. I said, man, you know, I'd like to go down and help. And they said, no, no, please don't. He says, because what's happening is people are showing up and they don't have the means to take care of themselves. And we're having to take care of them unless you can take care of yourself. You know, we really don't want any more people coming into the area. I said, well, look, man, I'm a backpacker. I said, I can go three months, uh, no problem. I can pump my own water. I don't need water. I don't need food. I don't need anything. I've got everything I need to survive anywhere in the world. And they said, oh my God, you're just the person that we need. Because right now we need people that can hike in because the roads are all completely covered. Do you think you could hike in and find out what's going on if we gave you communication equipment? I said, no problem. Absolutely, I can go in there. So I went to, I'm going to call them out, Lear Corporation. I was working there. I went into the management. I said, look, you know, I want to take a leave of absence without pay. I, I told them I don't need pay. I said, I'm going to go down and help the people of Katrina. And, uh, and they said, uh, well, you can do that. You won't have a job to come back to if you do that. I said, are you kidding me? I said, those people need help. I said, but I, I've got the unique qualifications to go down there and help these people. We don't care. We don't pay you to go help the people in New Orleans. Sorry. You, if, you, if you walk out right now, take a, I know it's just going to go for a month. Okay, not any corporation can do it. You're not, nobody is irreplaceable. They, they, you can always do without an employee for a month. I don't care if you're a small business. Okay, now, you know, if you haven't trained somebody to take over, if you're the owner of a small business in your absence, then you're not running your business very well. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying that because a small business, it's a bit more difficult to lose, you know, an employee. But a corporation, oh, hell no. So I, I chewed on it and I debated on it. I think I discussed it with my ex-wife and she was like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And so I, I, I bowed into the corporation and I said, okay, fine. I won't go then. Biggest mistake of my life. That corporation laid me off a year later with, uh, and I didn't even get my, I was within six weeks of getting uh, my uh, pension. And that's why they did it because they didn't want me to get my pension. I should have known that was an evil freaking corporation, right? And I could have gone down there and helped those people. Probably come back and, and by the way, I, as soon as they laid me off, I found another job within two weeks. So it wasn't like I couldn't find another job because that was at the peak of my cybersecurity career in high demand. So I, I should have just told them to go after themselves. Anyway, but that pension was looming. And then in the end, I didn't even get it. I think God was punishing me for being stupid. Well, Okay, so what I'm saying here is if you've, everybody's got unique talent. If you're a lineman, you go in and you do lineman work and you can help out. Okay, if you're a, a carpenter, uh, probably not needed right now, but eventually if you want to go in and do some volunteer work as a carpenter, you're a carpenter, you're uniquely qualified. Right now, what they need are backpackers. Now, have you ever seen a backpacker hike the Appalachian Trail? They're like a billy goat, man. You know, it's like those guys that hike up on Mount Everest. Okay, they can go up and down those mountains like billy goats. And they can carry supplies into those people that need them. And also they can find them. And then, and if they, you know, given a Starlink, they can go in and, and communicate back. I found a batch of people up here and there's an old dude. He's been injured. He's gonna bleed out. I've, I've, I've put, and of course he's, he's got medical supplies in his backpack. And I guarantee you, if we put together right now a batch of backpackers, they could hike all over those mountains and find people on the ground. Because, you know, there's only so much you can do from the air. It's like a bombing campaign. You can bomb the hell out of Hezbollah forever, but they're taught, just like Hamas. They've been bombing Hamas for a year. Well, not Hamas. They've just been killing Palestinians for a year. Yeah, that, that's another story we'll get into. But, you know, so, so if you're a backpacker, get your ass to Mars, man. 
I don't I know FEMA's gonna try to stand against you, but you can work with the locals. The locals are begging for help. And you've got the unique qualifications and you've got the equipment. So if any backpackers watch these videos, I want you to go now. I would go if I hadn't broke my neck. I dare say I could still do it. Now I wouldn't be moving like those billy goats. <laughs> they can go up and down mountains because I'm used to hiking flat territory here in Florida. But in my day, you know, even, even in my day hiking a 60 pound pack up a mountain, although I did it, I went all the way over Flat Top Mountain. Anybody in Virginia can tell you that's, that's a hell of a hike with a 60 pound pack on your back. But uh, that, was, that was when I was really in my heyday. But e even now, I could slowly get up that mountain if I hadn't broke my neck and had have medical reasons for not going. All right, so enough on helping the people and how FEMA's blocking everything. By the way, there's been some people they're talking about taking up arms against FEMA. I don't know, man. I hope it doesn't come to that because right now we just need to help the people and then deal with FEMA later on. You know, if we want to, if you want to get into a, a gunfight with some federales uh, after everybody's been helped, well, that's that's your prerogative. I mean, you know, I, I couldn't blame you for being angry. I'd be angry too. Federal government, you know, they don't care. This country has ever seen. The reason why those Americans in North Carolina, those mothers, those fathers, those precious little children, were left to die, were left on rooftops begging, begging their government for help that never came, is because Kamala Harris turned FEMA into an illegal alien resettlement agency. Its manpower, its dollars, its resources, its mental energy was spent over the last four years learning how to do one thing, how to get illegal aliens from outside the country into your town. And so when disaster struck, they were not ready, they were not prepared, they were not capable, and they did not care. And our fellow citizens, including babies, children, young kids, were left to suffer and drown. They did not scramble the helicopters. They did not scramble the military. They did not send needed assistance. But if those children had been living in a foreign country, they've been living in Haiti, or they've been living in Venezuela, why then Kamala Harris would have sent in help immediately. A betrayal like we've never seen before, Sean. This is infuriating. Let me, uh, let me get into my James Fosworth. You might be a Democrat. If you want to send $200 billion to Ukraine and give the hurricane victims $700, you might be a Democrat. If you're for child trafficking, you might be a Democrat. And I could just go on and on and on, but that's, that's literally what Democrats are for. You might be a Democrat if you want to send an unlimited number of 2,000 pound bombs to Israel and only give the hurricane victims $700 apiece. And I got some tweets. I think we just gave some money to Lebanon. Now here we are bombing the crap load out of Lebanon, and we're giving them money. <laughs> you know. And I got another uh, ex post by Laura Loomer. Uh, I can't remember what. I think her she was might have been on about the trucks. All right, all right. Enough on the hurricane. And I, I could show you video. I mean, but just go around. It's, it's finally coming up on YouTube. There's a lot of. Uh, of course, they're they're censoring everything. I will tell you that. If you want to really see what's going on, you're going to have to go to Rumble. And speaking of censorship, I wanted to talk about that just one second. Because I want you to go to The Burn on Rumble. The Burn on Rumble. YouTube is censoring the hell out of me right now. Okay, not only am I buried in the algorithm, if you're actually watching this video, it's a miracle on YouTube. Uh, but they are, they're actually taking down, because something, something bad is coming our way. And I'm not sure if it's not another uh, virus. Uh, who knows? I, I, and I'm just speculating. I don't know anything. But they're taking down. They're actually going through my old videos from years ago where I was talking about the China virus. And uh, they're deleting them. And I'm getting emails. This video has been deleted. That video, Because back then when I was just hiking around, I would just talk about things because I figured, you know, you know, people don't want to just look at nature. I thought they just want to. And it was mostly about politics. And I'm sure I said things about the uh, the virus. And uh, and so they, they, they're actually combing through those old videos and taking them down. After a couple of years. Now, I don't care. I mean, nobody's watching those videos. <laughs> you know I mean? Hell, nobody can even find me, you know, on YouTube, that is. So just uh, that's uh, on censorship. YouTube thinks there's medical misinformation. Now, you have to get all of the data 
I'm going to encourage you to go everywhere that you can and get all of the data that you can. Some of it will be misinformation. Some of it will be okay. All right. You're just going to have to gather everything you can. But for YouTube to be able to decide what's good and bad, that's uh, that's not good. I'm just saying that's not good. All right. So, uh, and, but the on the freedom of speech issue, you do understand you can go into a, a, a crowded theater and you can yell fire. You can shout fire. Fire! 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 Now, if somebody's out here and I cause, uh, you know, a ranger to come flying in here, I imagine I'll get a big ticket. <laughs> you know, just, or if you cause a riot going out of that theater, you're going to get arrested for causing a riot. Now, you're not going to get arrested for shouting the word fire in a crowded theater. And if somebody gets killed, you might get charged with manslaughter. <laughs> but you're not going to get... Uh, that, that's not a free speech issue. Okay, a lot of people, they use, a lot of Democrats use that as an example. Another example is, let's say you got into a downtown Chicago or, or Detroit, and you use the N-word. N! 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 And you're shouting that word going down the street. You can shout it all day long. You know the N-word I'm talking about. Now, are you going to live very long? <laughs> I don't, maybe not, man. <laughs> Somebody might get a little uh, peeved at you uh, shouting that word in the middle of uh, Detroit or Chicago, but it's perfectly within your rights, according to the Constitution, to be able to shout that word all day long. That is not hate speech. It's just stupid speech. <laughs> and, you, you, and you're going to get the crap kicked out of you, but uh, that's up to you. You know, you do what you want. I try to keep my videos as clean as possible. Uh, so, uh, anyway, that's off on that tangent. We talked about the hurricane. I don't know. I can't remember what the next topic is. We'll get it here in just a minute. All right, let's talk about the coming strike from Israel on Iran. Now, I predicted October 7th, and you know, a lot of people that say, well, that cybersecurity guy, what if you're wrong? Well, predictions are always wrong. I'm not a prophet. You know, uh, and, you know, that's why I don't usually make predictions. I'm like Dan Bongino. The predictions like an ass. Everyone has one. <laughs> and I've been wrong on most of my predictions. I was predicting $6 a gallon gas, uh, not knowing that uh, Biden would tap into the strategic oil reserves, for example. I was, I was, roar. I was, roar. I, you know, that's just one example because I lost a bet with a friend of mine. So, uh, so anyway, and uh, I, I, I'm hoping Israel won't strike. That was a pretty limited uh, strike that Iran did. They could have done a lot more damage and killed a lot more people. Uh, but uh, anyway, there, there's still significant damage. And, you know, and that's, that's one of the things that when I listen to Right Wing Radio, or uh, I'll call him out, Mark Levin, he's a Zionist. He's saying, go in and bomb their nuclear facilities. Bomb their oil fields. That's Lindsey Graham, uh, Mark Levin, Sean Hannity. I mean, all the people, are, they're saying all of this. Do you know what would happen? If, if we do something like that, holy shit, Iran is going to hit every nuclear facility, I mean every oil facility in the Persian Gulf. And they're also going to hit our bases. So a lot of Americans are going to die, from number one. Number two, they're going to hit uh, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, they're going to shut down the Straits of Hormuz. Okay, I don't care if Israel hits them with every nuclear weapon they got. Iran's still going to do all of this. And I... Uh, Anyway, that you, you do you know what that would do to the world. And do you think that Russia and China are going to stand idly by as the entire world economy is completely crippled by a madman, that Netanyahu lunatic? And, of course, lunatics like uh, Mark Levin or these right-wing commentators saying, bomb, 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 Iran. Thank God McCain's not around anymore. I, you know, I... I don't know, I hate to talk to about the dead that way, but he was not right. He was just not right. And, you know, Woodrow Wilson, for example, that guy was a, he was a dictator back in the day. I was a Democrat, by the way, in 1913, if you ever want to. He got us into World War I for no damn reason. It's just like we shouldn't even be in, in Iran. I mean, in the Middle East. You know, Israel is not our ally. We have no strategic interest in the Middle East except stealing their oil. And that's going to come to an end. I can tell you that right now. The Middle East is not going to put up with that anymore. Now that now that we've seen the Iron Dome penetrated, 
and uh, and how easily the how, how how easily those hypersonic missiles can take out a ship. You know, our Navy's vulnerable. Everything those bases, uh, they don't have any sort of uh, protection. And uh, another thing I was right about, and I just like I want to rub it in people's face. I was telling you two years ago, when when the war in Ukraine started. Number one, we had no strategic interest uh, funding Ukraine. That money should have been going to America. Now look at this. We can only give $700 to the people. It's also because we funded the illegal aliens. They, they used the FEMA money. I forgot to tell you about that. They used the FEMA money to uh, you know, take care of the illegal aliens, and that's why FEMA has no money, and we can't help Americans right now. But anyway, it's also you know because we sent $200 billion to U Ukraine, and now what, what do we got for it? Russia is crushing Ukraine at the moment. I told you this two years ago. People were going, how could you not be for Ukraine? That cybersecurity guy, you're a Putin lover. You're a Putin lover. You love If you love Russia so much, go live in Russia, that cybersecurity guy. Go to Russia and live in Russia. And oh, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. I said, well, I, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, I, yeah, I wouldn't mind a nice long visit. Spent about six months in Russia, but I can't do it because of my medical problems. But anyway, because uh, Russia's beautiful, beautiful place. Well, I mean, talk about hiking. Boy, I tell you, you could, you could hike uh, from from the time you were born. <laughs> you'd, never, you'd never cover a tenth of that country. It's so fast, and I imagine you know the wildlife might eat you. Uh, did you see my last video? At the end, there was a, a Russian wrestling a bear. Uh, probably most people didn't stay to the end of the video. But anyway, uh, so uh, so I was completely right about Ukraine. So that, so we pissed away. Well, we're still pissing away money. Two hundred billion dollars killed. I, I, I see right now we got about a million plus dead Ukrainians. Uh, I would say it's in the hundreds of thousands of dead Russians. Uh, you know we've uh, depleted our weapon stockpiles. Uh, we've pissed away all that money for no reason. We're bankrupting. We, we're we're going to be going bankrupt a lot sooner than what we would have as a country because of that. And for what? For what? Somebody tell me. Leave a comment below. Why, 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 why were we even in Ukraine? What does Ukraine have to do with the United States other than it's a money laundering place for the Democrats? That's the only reason that Ukraine's there. Or it's a, it's a, it was a battling ram or a proxy that we could use to uh, beat up on Russia. Didn't work out too well, did it? Told you there's no way that Ukraine was going to defeat Russia. You know, we, they, and then of course there was multiple peace deals offered. We didn't take them up on that. Yeah, I'm just saying, I hate being right about everything. But I'm always right, <laughs> except in my predictions. Yeah. All right, so that's it on the Middle East. But I'm just telling you, if, if we do, if, if Israel provokes Iran, uh, I mean, if they really hit the nuclear facilities or hit them with the nuke, I mean, God help us. That's it, man. I mean, the whole world, you're, you're going to see 10 to $30 a gallon for gas. Can you imagine what that's going to do to inflation? You think uh, you're... you're your uh, stuff at the grocery store is expensive now. Holy shit! Imagine four times paying four times as much. It, no way. I mean, and think about the the T bills and stuff. I mean, I, literally overnight that would probably bankrupt everybody in the United States, and and the entire world would be shut down with no oil coming out of the Middle East. China'd be so pissed off. I wouldn't blame Russia and China if they nuked. Well, in Pakistan, you got Pakistan hanging out there. They got nukes. They might just nuke Israel just to say, okay, we got to get, we got to eliminate this mad dog to save the world. And then what happens when Pakistan nukes Israel or gives the nukes to Turkey to nuke Israel off the face of the planet? I'm just telling you, I mean, that's just how this thing could escalate. And so these idiots talking about bombing, you know, Iranian oil facilities and, and their nuclear power. They, they, these people want Armageddon. If, if not, if not an economic Armageddon, Armageddon for real, in global thermonuclear war. So when you hear these these idiots on the radio calling for that stupid stuff, or, or Lindsey Graham, South Carolina, you need to get rid of Lindsey Graham. That's the biggest freaking idiot I've ever seen in my lifetime. All right, that might be it for today, unless I come up with something else to talk about. We'll see. Peace out. Stay free. Well, we start in uh, Lebanon as a new wave of Israeli airstrikes has hit the southern part of Beirut. 
Sunday also marks the sixth day of the IDF ground invasion of the country's south. Here's footage of the latest strikes overnight. <laughs> Our correspondent Yasin Ekin is in Beirut. I mean, Yasin, another night sky burning uh, over the capital of, of Lebanon. Can you just bring us what's the latest, what's the atmosphere, what are people saying and thinking around you? Yeah, uh, I don't know if you heard that, but uh, there was a series of massive explosions. Everyone around me has panicked. Uh, it's the largest explosion that we've heard over the course of the past couple hours. And keep in mind, there were a number of massive explosions. One was no farther than two kilometers from our current position. We felt the pressure wave crush our chests in one sense of the word. There was another one in the far distance, which essentially targeted what we believe is a oil storage facility uh, pertaining to Hezbollah. And there was a secondary and tertiary explosion resulted after that attack. Another massive attack in the far distance, which we believe was a munitions depot. There were multiple explosions back to back as a result of that attack. And uh, there was another massive explosion somewhere close to the Rafik Hariri International Airport. This is a series of attacks which in one sense of the word doesn't make much sense because like you mentioned most of these attacks are targeting the southern suburbs of Beirut of the Lebanese capital an area known as Dahya a Hezbollah stronghold however the attacks are not limited to Dahya alone over the course of the past few days their attacks have gone as far north as Tripoli that's the, as far as you can go in in Lebanon and we have essentially witnessed attacks against Bin Shabayl. Um even in Dahya in, 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 in the Lebanese capital attacks have essentially uh, taken place um, sorry, I thought I heard something. The attacks taking place against refugee camps across the country. So we understand that Israel has been expanding its scope. It's been expanding its scope in a way that it's just not targeting Dahi or Hezbollah strongholds. It is targeting any targets pertaining to Hezbollah, whether it is in Dahi or it is not in Dahi. We understand that these attacks are taking place in civilian and residential complexes. And the attacks are growing as every single moment goes by. The time now is just past one o'clock in the morning. And we can expect these attacks to continue for at least a few more hours. Friday evening was quite peaceful or quiet in one sense of the word. And it seems that the Israeli military is making up for lost time. We understand that Rosh Hashanah was uh, being celebrated by many Israelis and people of the Jewish faith between October 2nd and the 4th. Saturday marked the Shabbat. And just as that ended, the Israelis continued their extreme bombardment. But one more thing that's very concerning at this given moment is there are reports emanating out of Israel suggesting they will strike back at Iran within the few hour, within the upcoming hours. But we also understand that Monday marks the October 7th. It is the first year anniversary of these October 7 attacks. We can expect Tel Aviv to deliver on its promise not just to attack Iran as a result of the barrage of uh, missiles fired at Israel, but we can also expect Tel Aviv to deliver on its promise to retaliate against the entire Middle East. That includes Iran, that includes Syria, Yemen, and it most definitely involves Lebanon as well. Well, Yasin, like you said, a year on Monday, and it seems that the goals have not yet been attained. Hamas is still there, and the conflict has spilled over. You yourself, of course, the best witness to that in Beirut. That was Artis Yasin Ekin reporting from the Lebanese capital. Thank you, Yasin.